Hi, everybody. Um, we are here again on uh, Happy Saturday, a new month in quarantine and with our virtual paint outs. And this week we are very excited to have as our critic, our critiquer, um, Deke Palachek. And uh, hi, Deke. Hi. So, um, Deke, we will be recording this. Actually, it's been recording all of this. Okay. Um, but, uh, that will be edited by uh, Virginia uh, Iqbal. Um, and uh, it's thank you so much, Virginia, for doing that. And um, we have loads of people on here, more than 50 people registered. So I know we'll have a full, a full house. Oh, good. So, um, you know, one of the things I just want to start with it before we get going, I guess, first of all, to say to everybody, we will, um, we plan to be done about 1.30 today. We're experimenting with a little bit different way of doing this. Um, in that uh, Deke has chosen 20 paintings, uh, although she's uh, now uh, ready to make comment on some others. And so we'll talk to her about those in a second. Uh, but know that we're just experimenting with some of the ways to be able to do this, uh, this program um, so that we get the most out of it and we can go a little bit more in depth than just a minute or two on each painting that we can really get uh, Deke's perspective on these. So um, we'll uh, be finishing around 1.30. Um, and I think uh, other than that, uh, we'll continue to do these. Um, even though we've uh, uh, maybe gotten a little bit of uh, leeway to be able to leave home a bit. Um, and I think at this point, given the poll last week, that we'll keep it at this time. But please let me know if you think we should change the time or if we need to go to an evening or something else. But at this point, we'll just keep this time going. So with that, um, Deke, thanks so much for um, coming and being with us. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is, how much is plein air a part of your full uh, artist um, uh, career and life? Um, well, the last five or six years, it was 90% of it. Mm -hmm. um, if I wasn't, I traveled for, you know, seven months a year and I was gone constantly. And it's just now, and so what, what I've seen the progression of so many other fellow artists is that you do a lot of these because it ramp, it, you know, it gets you, there's a way to plein air paint, and I'm going to show you a way that's a great way to develop a plein air painting. But, um, and so, you know, being out there over and over and over again is what gets you into the, you know, the master's level and the invitationals and all that kind of stuff. So it takes years to build up to that. And then you get to that point where you're in the invitationals, you're in the ones that have, you know, great sales and stuff. Um, and then you, but, but then you don't want to. So, because it's a lot of, st it's, you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of travel. Um, and so now I am doing more studio work. I'll get it down from like, I, w I did 15 a year for a couple years. And now I do eight, but they're all out of state except for Door County. And then I will get it down to two or three. And so that's a progression of most um, planar painters. And because by that time you've got gallery notification and um, noti noticing you, and then you start painting for those. So, um, so, but prior to that, plein air was everything. So, and, and it's fun. I mean, it's wonderful. Talk, talk just for a second. Prior to all that, what did you do before you were a painter? Um, I was a mathematician and uh, I'm one of those left brain, right brain painters. And it's so funny because if you meet another one, like you, Ms. Mary, um, we like cling to each other because we're like awash in this sea of right brain people. So um, I was a mathematician and I, I was on Wall Street um, for about 20 some years. And then I broke off and did startup companies out in Seattle and San Francisco. Came back here, started a company, sold it, and then started painting about almost 10 years ago. Yeah, good. Yeah. All right. And so how long have you actually been painting? About nine years. And of that, like, you know, when you first start up, you go to a class once a week and then maybe you paint once or twice. But I'd say the last five or six years, it's been, you know, all day, every day. Yeah, that's great. That's uh, very inspiring and motivating. So, yeah, <laughs> and the more you do, the more you do. So it's good. So, uh, Dick, tell us about um, how you're going to approach uh, our paintings today. Okay. The first thing I want to say to all of you is that because I'm only doing um, uh, the 20, the um, for everybody, I want you to look at your paintings and I want you to pick out your focal point. 
so that when I get to your painting, I want you to have that answer right there. And if the um, if you don't have a focal point, if you're not sure, or you you say, ah, I wish it was there. I meant it to be there. We're gonna that's what we're gonna focus on, quick and dirty. Um, on all of them, but especially the ones that I don't elaborate on. So at least everybody has something to take away from the critique, but the other one, so the, those will be short. But make sure you know the answer before we get there. And then we'll talk about a couple suggestions to get you to that focal point, okay? Because that, that seems to be, when I was going through these and looking at the ones that I um, wasn't choosing, but then all of them, I, I think strengthening that focal point would be a good step at this stage for all of you to kind of um, work on and drill down on. So that's first. Second, I wanna go, now can I share my screen, Ms. Mary? Yes, please. Okay, so I'm gonna share this screen with this real quick diagram. Um, and this is something that we do in the workshop. So the way um, that I teach and what has worked for me as a process to developing a plein air painting has to do with finding a big, interesting shape. Okay, and so um, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, I went backwards on this thing for some reason when I first did this, but this was from a, a painting and I found, so this is the, the bottom right is this big shape and it's a really interesting shape to me. I like that shape. If I turn it on upside down or to either side, I still like that shape. It has some interest for me and that's the shape that I'm going to develop and that I'm going to hang my painting on. So okay. let me just stop you for a second, um, just to make sure yep. so your bottom right is, is one that's basically two tone. And yeah. the, yeah. On the, oh, on do you want me to, I can point to it. Point, point to if it just want. because I think we have a reverse. Yep. 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 It's, oh, that's our bottom left. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so yeah, so this right here, this big, beautiful shape is what was interesting to me. And I want to make sure that I do not lose that shape. That's my big dark shape. So the second one, I go and I now I start to add a little bit of interest to it. I add a, a second value to it. I, tur I turn that midtone into a light tone and then left some of those, um, those midtones in there. I start just finding what the mid values are. And again, I, it still maintains its interest as just a, a shape. If I turned it upside down, if I turned it on its side, it's still of great interest to me, okay? And the third thing that I do, and this is such a wonderful way to develop a plein air painting, because if um, even in this third section where I'm just now starting to put in some of those mid-tones, first the second one I put in the lights, this one I start adding a little bit of color and staying within the mid-tone because I have my darks in there. I'm just starting to, to pull out some of that information and then by the end, I can add, you know, some of the other interesting things that will develop this into a painting. But by doing it this way, at any one of these steps, I can, and so if you run out of light, or if you run out of, uh, you know, if things are moving, if, if um, it, you know, you're worried about your, your value and holding that painting together, if you look at this last one, that shape is still there. You can still see my original shape that I had in there, and I kept my values. So that's what I was trying to explain what I was going to critique on today. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. And now we can start the critique. That's so, true. Okay. We've, so, we've been hearing about shapes and yes. um, you need to uh, uh, unshare to get to the next one. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, and so while, while you hear about shapes and getting in the big shapes a lot, this one takes it one step even broader and says to, to find one kind of big shape to hang to hang the rest. I'm just hanging a little paint on all these other things. So um, you always put in your darkest dark as your shape like that. It doesn't have to be, and you can start to get fancy. But the other thing that I want to stress with you guys. Um, so now I unshared, and now I need to share a screen, and now I need to find my. And and also when you did that first under um, underpainting. Yep, yep. Um, were you doing it with uh, uh, s the paint broken down uh, with um, uh, Gemsol or something? Were you? Uh, yeah, I, 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 on that one in particular, I, I had the whole canvas dark and then I wiped out the lights. But you can also have the whole canvas light and then put in your darks. 
So it's just about getting that shape. But here's the other thing I want to stress with you guys. This is one way of developing a painting. There are a million ways of developing a painting. You can draw it in and fill in the, fill in the lines. You can block in big shapes. You can do... My message to you is to pick one and master it. So be aware of the process that you're using to develop a painting and do it over and over and over again. And then when you've kind of got that mastered and you get out there and you're like, okay, where's my big shape? I'm gonna get it in there. Then, then go on and develop another one. And each one of these things are tools. But until you've mastered one of them, don't start your paintings a different way every time. It's, it's too, it's, it's a longer way to mastery if you're doing all of them all at the same time. So pick one, whatever it is, I showed you one, but you might have a different method of doing it and that's fine. They're all great methods. This is just good for plain air because it gives you a lot of information that if you get caught, you have enough to finish that painting when you go home. But, um, and so pick a tool and master it and then go to the next tool. But first you have to be aware that there are these tools and that you need to identify them and, and master them. So, okay, on with the critique. Should we go? Yes. Okay, this is a wonderful little painting here. Um, my first question is, um, where's your center of interest? Hi, uh, I'm Tobin, I did the painting. And uh, in my defense, uh, I'm doing a series of paintings of the Chicago skyline, and I'm very interested in getting critiques on them because I think I may possibly be producing very strange paintings because okay. the but skyline you know, is the I focal just, point, but it, but it really isn't. I realize that. Yeah, I just want, and I just want you guys to answer, you know, the, the question about, so I, I don't mean to be, you can tell I'm left brain and that I came out of the corporate world because it's like, we got business here. So. Yeah. So where's your, if you don't have a focal point, that's okay. It's okay. You don't know how, you do not know how many times I have come back home with paintings or like weeks later I say, you know, somebody will, in my critique group, somebody will bring up, where's your focal point? So it's, it's it, there's nothing, no defense needed. Um, so where, where would you like your focal point to be? Well, as I say, I'm doing a series of the skyline. So when you look at them all, the, the I, skyline yeah. is the focal point. In this painting, I realize the focal point is maybe the little birds or the or the the line between the shore and the uh, and the and the lake. Okay, so two things here. One, you've kind of got two paintings here. So if you look at this bottom painting, you've got this lovely little painting of the ground with the birds, and then you've got this other painting up on top of it, and you need to bring those two together. And if and if in order to do that. Um, these some of these lines need to come up and cross over here you did a great job back here nice you know muted value it pushes it way back and the way you're going to kind of get these two to go a little bit is to put a little something in the water that'll give you perspective you know like a longer line here i can wait wait i can annotate <laughs> um i forgot um you can bring kind of an a long whoops a long a longer line here and then a shorter line here, and then a shorter line here. You know, to, to get, see how I'm kind of getting an arrow to give you perspective, because right. right now that water is just flat. And, and you need just the, it doesn't need to be waves or anything like that, just a little bit of subtleness, and then it'll kind of pull this whole painting together. Yes. Um, and the other thing is that these birds are a little bit low for a focal point, um, mm -hmm. you know, down there. You want it more on, you know, I, I use the, the rule of thirds most of the time. So I have my focal points right here, right here, right here, or right here. And the biggest thing with this painting is that you have driven me down this path. You're pointing, wait, you're pointing right there. You've got another pointer coming in here. You've led me right here, which is a great place for a focal point. Mm -hmm. So give me something there. Put something there for me. A bird would be great. Those, you know, uh, one of the birds there, and then these could be a little bit less. Th this is your dark, dark, and your light, light, and they, they kind of, um, so they could be a little bit lighter. And then give you've driven me here, so give me something. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to be talking about that a lot in a lot of the different critiques. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay. 
So now, Mary, how do I get to the next one? Uh, use the arrows. On, oh, right here. Wait, yep, on I got to get out of annotate, right? Yep, clear. Oh, clear. Clear. Yeah. Clear first, and then. And then. Not, I think you'll clear. have to clear the annotation. Clear. Stop, stop that. Clear. There we go. Here it is. Drawing. Oh, and then I have to get rid of the annotation. Gotcha. Right. Okay. And now, I'm still not coming up where I have a little arrow to get to the next painting. Uh, so it's by the painting. Oh, there it is. There it went. There you go. It wasn't there a minute ago. Okay. Okay. This one I'm not going to um, critique because it's not, uh, it doesn't hang with the, the big design that I was talking about. Um, but a beautiful little painting. Where's your focal point? Is, is is Andrea here? Yeah, I, I don't know, but why don't you why don't you okay. keep on going? I, okay. I think that's the that's probably the good question to ask people. But keep on going, so you have time to do all the exact for the that are people that are here. Here's the reference photo, and that one came up again for a second. Yeah, go ahead. One more. So um, this is a sweet little painting. You did such a great job on these trees here. Um, you know the way they're painted loosely. Um, if this is indeed your focal point, you could have put a little bit more here to say it's a boat because it doesn't necessarily read as a boat. Um, so maybe work on that, uh, you know, just a, a little bit, a line or a pole or something. Um, but it's the, the water that I want to talk about. So this beautifully done. And this is these cool greens back here. This could be a little bit lighter, but um, nothing too. So I want to go back. Whoops, wrong way. I, I I think it was on the other side of that. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. So here, if you look, um, look at how thin that line is and how to give it distance and to lay it flat. So here again, um, this does not give as much distance because it's it's wide it's not foreshortened as it should be in order to do that so the two things that i would say would be you know this line is a little bit thick but nice that you reflected the sky in the water like that the other thing within this water if this is indeed your focal point then you can use this water to get to that focal point you can again make those lines that are i, I don't need to do it but you know, if there was a small line here and a bigger line and a bigger line in the water to kind of give that, that uh, perspective that uh, Christina was talking about last week, lead people right to that focal point. And again, even in the sky and the clouds, you don't need to on this one, but your clouds are a good pointer to that focal point. But otherwise, really nicely done. Thank you. And I agree. <laughs> Critique. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's the, the reference photo, and here's the path. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful um, little painting. Um, the, the, my critique of this is that when I squint on this, I'm not, um, you need to watch your drawing because this is, look at how big this is from here to here, where on the, um, oops. On, if you look at here, this is a lot smaller. You know, it's, it, it lays down flatter. So by making it longer, it looks like you're going up a hill. And, and you can go up a hill if you want to, um, but it depends on what your intent was there. Um, and the only other thing about this one, um, again, is if I squint at this and look for something that I'm gonna kind of hang my painting on, this is a nice, wonderful, dark area, but it's, this just needs a little bit more um, weight over here to skip over. So just probably something in the grass and, and even like draw these shapes into each other. You've done it beautifully here, okay? Am I sh actually, I'm pointing at the screen with my finger like you guys can see it. <laughs> okay, thank mind. you. Okay. Well, where, where, does the, where, where do those uh, changes need to be made? Right, so right here, I'm sorry. Like you could pull, this could just be a little bit darker to sink it. The other thing, just as far as you're drawing, these are a little bit closer than in that picture and you need to um, 
you know, push them back a little bit if you want that to be. But this is this is just a sweet little painting the way it is. It doesn't matter that that wasn't um, that they weren't pushed back, but that there wasn't that. So, all right, thank you. I love this little painting. I love. Um, are um, are you finished with this painting? Uh, no, I'm not. I I just literally went out at four thirty and did a quick thirty minute. Okay, but just I just want I just want yes or no. So is this you know? No. But, oh, I'm no. sad that you're not finished with this painting. No. I wish you were because I love this painting. There's just something really um, uh, abstract and really fresh about it. I don't think it needs a whole lot. Look at this big, beautiful shape that she hung this painting on, this right here. And then to have these just kind of come out of that, even this where they're not anchored. So if you wanted to make it more realistic, you might anchor those a little bit more, but I, yeah. I wouldn't want to. They're so, this is such a fun, fresh painting. Um, this is the only line right here. Can you see where I'm going on this? Yes. This cursor. You know, that that doesn't read as well. Okay. I'd probably just make this dark, have it blend right into here and come up, but it's just kind of fresh and easy. Um, so I like it a, a lot just the way it is. And what a lesson there just to, you know, stop. So. Okay, thank you. You bet. And this, wait, and that was, yeah, that was your reference photo, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, this one, I, um, this one I'm, I'm gonna skip over. I just wanna ask, where's the focal point on this? I think I lost my focal point. I was trying for the bridge, but uh, I scraped it all off and ended up with this when I repainted on top of it. Yeah, and so just make sure that you, you figure out where your focal point is. What you've got set up here is for your focal to be, point to be right here. You kind of let us in, you circle us around, you kind of skip over this guy. This, need, this um, the drawing on the, on the person um, needs work. It looks like a, a, a cartoon character instead of just a quick image of a, you know, of somebody out there fishing. Um, it, it looks short and squat is what it looks. So, and the head looks really tall. So it looks cartoonish. So you wanna just practice those on the side. And even when you're out there painting, have a little canvas next to you. So when you put those people in, just make those free few brush strokes so that you can, by the time you get to the painting, you, you kind of ha know that his arm's in the right place or and um, that he's in perspective. Um, but you're, you've led us here, and this would be a great place for your focal point. Mm -hmm. Do you see where that lead is? And you could put a dark dark in here and lighten up this grass. So um, that's where I wanted to go with that, just to make sure that you've identified and, and asked. If you want this to be your focal point, that's going to take a little bit more work because you haven't let us there. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, this one, you saw the, the reference. Hi, it's Anne. Hi. Um, so this one, the, the, this one got, this is really warm back here. And this one got really cool. Um, and so I don't know if that was part of, of your intent or your palette, it doesn't read poorly or anything, but it, for me, warmth would be a little bit more interesting. Um, but most importantly, the two points on this one is, this is a crooked line. This does not go straight up and down. And that's, that's tiles. Those are ceramic tiles that are jointed. Nope. So nope. they're actually nope. not. Well, Wait, pretty straight, look, pretty look straight. At this, see this line right here? Yeah. It's crooked. Do you know why it's crooked? Because of the camera. This is what a camera does. It, it, it gives you this fisheye thing. Oh. So all of these buildings are straight up and down. So I'll show you this in a couple other paintings, um, but make okay. sure all of these lines are straight up and down. That's the camera that's doing that. And it's oh. the camera down these perspectives. On your buildings, unless you want them to look like they're leaning in your painting, uh -huh. If they do, they look like they're leaning. They're, they're tipping over a little bit. 
And th so those lines should be straight up and down. And so you need to override what you see in that photo. Um, ah. The other thing back here is that this is kind of a tangent. This, this color back here, you need to separate this through. This isn't reading. This could be a lot lighter and a lot bluer. Mm -hmm. so, um, and so this could stay the same. You did great on just touching little bits of information on these windows. These windows need to be straight up and down. They're all leaning in because you painted what you saw in the, in the paint. In, in photo. The photo. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I'm going to show you that I, I can't stress that enough when you're painting buildings from photos. These, okay. In order for it to be right, even if it's a leaning building, you want it to stand up. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Thank this I would just warm. You could, you know, this was such a beautiful warm um, to get the feel of this street and stuff like that. But you did a great job on, you know, like I said, on just putting images of those windows and developing these bricks and stuff like that. So that's nice. So this could, okay. I, and I think that, that could be this, cooler and lighter. Yeah. So the building on the left, the, the one that is the highest, um, the, the whitest, that yeah. one should be warmer probably. Um, is that the one you mean warmer? Either one. Uh -huh. Because they're both a lot warmer than you have them. This is a little bit more orangey peachy tone. Yes. This is mm -hmm. still kind of a, a yellowy ochre tone. And I know right. you have this back here like this. The other thing that I'll say about this is, again, you have led me right here. This is where yes. you want me to go. So yes. give me something. maybe put a dash of color in there or mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be anything identifiable, but give mm -hmm. me something when you, when you, gotcha. when you get mm -hmm. me there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You bet. This is a wonderful piece of the brushwork on this is just fantastic. But again, going back to that whole theory of finding this big shape to hang this painting on, that this has a really nice, you know, it could have this big, nice C shape to it, but it, you've jumped here. And so my, um, so this doesn't, doesn't quite read. I would be connecting those darks somehow. And even though you probably saw those patches like that, I would still tend to, um, to connect those. Um, and, and, you know, maybe even like, these darks, there could be just a little bit darker, even though you're trying to push it back a little bit, but just to hold that, that shape, not, as, not nearly as dark as this, but you could kind of really find a shape to hang this painting on. Does that make sense? Yes. But the brushwork is just fabulous. This, this area is just wonderful. These trees are wonderful. When I looked at this, this tree, it was kind of interesting because you've got the tree going off tilted but usually the the um the leaves don't tilt usually the, the this is a branch that goes off so this tree could be straightened because it kind of looks tilted a little bit but that's really really getting picky on my part um the the, the paint application is fabulous okay thank you um okay so here's the reference photo and here's the painting. And um, I would, again, on this one, I would watch the drawing a little bit because a lot of what's interesting here is this ear and the, um, the you know, to get them to lay down. And then there's this shadow inside here. The light is coming from this way, okay? So um, in the painting, um, I would I would make these this beautiful dark green, and they probably are, and maybe it just didn't read right in the in the photo, and that you know, and to to really work on those shadows because it'll get that to lay down. Um, the other thing that's happening in this one is that both of these are kind of going up, up and out and off the painting. So um, to override that, you might consider bringing this this back line. Um, either straight or, you know, coming down to more of a point, which would head you to your, you know, more of your focal point. Um, the focal point in this one is the whole cow. Um, so it's not, it's one of those that doesn't need to have, but we as humans often go towards the heads of an animal. Um, and so if I would play this up just a little bit um, more. Great soft edges over here. Really good job. Um, nice you know, rich 
color down here and having it fade and kind of trying to get that again to make it lie down a little bit more instead of standing I, I keep on using my hands I, I, I should put them up near my face so you guys can see what I'm doing but um, again you could use some of those little lines that we used in the water like a directional line going here and oh. this way to send it back and flat and do I should not interrupt you, but do you think that the trees should come down to make a shape like you do connect the shapes? You you could, but you don't want to lose the um the edge of this head right here. So it doesn't need to. Just have it pointing the other way. Yeah. Or or if they yeah. Um so and like I said, I think by putting directional lines in here, like going back like this, Bobby. It, uh -huh. it'll, it'll send those trees further in the distance. Okay. So just because otherwise it, he, he looks closer to the trees and I think it'd be more interesting if those trees were further back because they are lighter. Yeah, and they could be lighter, okay. Yeah, um, but you did a good job here and then I would just make sure that you got those shadows those, and differentiated from your blue black, these greens. And because I'd, I'd pick a strong, direction of this light and I keep on using my hands and you guys can't see me. Um, I keep on you know like based on the shadows the light is coming from here so there's something you could do right here to kind of you know pop that that um, center of interest and exaggerate these shadows a little bit and distinguish them cool good job thank you Thanks. Um, so this one, I was going to, um, this one I'm going to pop over. And, and the focal point is very obvious in this one. And it's in a good place. It's in a good, you know, a good location within the painting. So here's the reference photo. And here's the painting. Good job. Really good job. Um, again, I'm going to go back to the focal point on these. Mary, am I rushing through these? Should I be taking, how, how's my? Do it as you'd like, keep going, you're fine. Okay. Um, so where's your focal point on this one? Uh, hi, so my focal point is the gold dome. And then as I painted, uh, my second focal point is the church in the far background and then the people being the third. So those are my focal points. Okay, first and foremost, there's only one focal point. <laughs> Okay. Everything else is subordinate to that. You can have other players that lead you to that focal point, but pick one. And so this, um, the, the things that we need to do to get a focal point is your lightest light against your darkest dark, your sharpest edge, your highest chroma. Um, there's one other thing and I can't remember right now. So for me, when I looked at this and it's really the beautiful little painting, my focal point would be right here. I would have hit that because I've got my dark darks. I can put some high chroma there um, and really pop that shadow and pop that edge right there. Um, and, th and then this can all kind of be leading, you know, these lines coming up this way can be leading into that. Even your sky could be coming down into that. Um, mm -hmm. so, I, so I would add more, this is kind of a grayish color compared to these, which got a little bit lighter. And I would just up the chroma on that. And it would take so little to make that, you know, and get those darks around it. So, and it's, and this is in a good spot. This isn't the greatest spot for a focal point. Great. Okay. okay. And what about adding trees to this? Um, I probably, you know, you might add one or two. Um, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't unless they were, you know, like back here or something like that. You want tree, there were trees up in front here, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't think you need them, especially because, let's go back here. You know, especially because they weren't, um, they didn't have green on them. And, th and that's not part of the story that you're trying to tell. Thank you, that's so helpful. Okay. And, but great, you know, really good job on your, um, on your perspective. You know, that your, this is a two point perspective. So you did a really good job in, in maintaining all that. And your people are nice. Thank you. Okay, this one I'm going to skip over, but I'm gonna just talk about that um, focal point again. 
Where is your focal point on this one? Maybe they're not here. No? Uh, this is Tat Tatiana's? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So this one I'm going to um, skip over real quick. Um, but here's the painting. And again, where's your focal point on this one? So it's supposed to be the building. This one? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the two sort of, you know, buildings side by side. It's a church. It's sort of, you know. Okay, so that's kind of, that's big for a focal point. Um, you know, I, I would pick, because it's not one shape together, they're two separate shapes. So then you've got two focal points there. Mm. Um, so you'd need to like, you know, connect them if to, into one shape before they could be considered a single focal point. Um, but this is a good, and this one probably is a little bit more interesting. You're drawing, um, there's two things happening here. One, your values, look at how much darker, if you squint at this, look at how much darker this is. Mm -hmm. then, um, then, you know, then the side, if you squint and look at the jump there, whereas these, this looks like the sun is hitting the face of them. In reality, this is backlit. This is, I'm using my hands again. Um, this is all, this looks like it's front lit, whereas the, the sun on the photo is actually coming from behind. And so this should be in more shadow um, and therefore cooler and just a little bit darker in your values. This, if you look at that picture, this is not, um, this makes it look like the, the, the building is fanned out, like, <laughs> like that. And whereas indeed it's just a building, this is, building is still going back. So look at the drawing of this right here um, so that it doesn't look like it's fanning. Mm -hmm. uh, but great job on these fr this, this front floral um, stuff, really interesting. Um, they, you know, you've got these clumps together and then you break out a couple and you give us some nice detail on those, which makes the other ones read really well. Um, and uh, I like the sky that it's, you know, it's darker on the top and, it, and you've got this white to highlight and, and bring everything together. It, where the work needs is on the, on the values within shadows and the light side. Okay. Yes, thank you. That's very useful. Okay. Jake, where would you put the focal point? Oops. Um, I would make, I would really press this like somewhere in here and make this more interesting. So I'd add a lot more chroma and I'd find a dark in there. Um, so it's just in a good spot for that. Um, this one's tough. Because there's not, let, so let's look at the photo to see where that focal point would be. Now on the, um, and on this one, you know, and this is a really good point because if it's hard to even determine the focal point from the, from the picture, even if we crop the picture, then um, think about standing somewhere different or finding something that's interesting that you can make into that focal point. So for me, I would really play on this right here. I would have a lot of detail here and these would kind of be, uh, you know, I kind of let them, uh, let them loose. But you did a good job of, of painting from this photo what's in the photo. And that's, a, and that's the first step for where you need to be. Um, but this one is, was a real tough one because this isn't even in light, this is shadow. Um, this isn't lit either. It's really lit from the back. Um, so then when you jump over to your painting, you know, you've got this lit up. And this isn't, doesn't appear to be in shadow. That just seems to be the color of the, of the actual buildings that you wanted to paint versus that color in shadow. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. I was having trouble sort of, you know, getting to the right colors and, and you're right. I mean, the, the, the light was kind of weird. It was midday. And so it's sort of, uh, it's probably overhead. It's sort of. Yeah, it's, yeah. Or, or you can tell it's from behind and yeah. you can tell it's from behind because um, these are in complete shadow and look at it. This, the light is kind of peeking around these two things from behind. And even right. the flowers are lit on the back. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so again, and the thing that I would look for in both taking a picture and finding something to paint is the shadows. Now these whole things are in shadow, but if, when you have a shadow, a cast shadow, like back here in this corner, then it gives you depth and it, you can lay the building down and you can create the, the dark and light that you need to create a focal point. But good job in, like I said, in taking on this subject and, um, and painting what you saw, the next step is to kind of edit a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So this one is just a wonderful little painting. Um, uh, th this right here, you just did such a good job on the back of these chairs and then letting them fade off. Who is this? This is Lori. Yes, yep. thank you. Um, the, um, when I look at this, oops. When I look at this and I squint, um, you know, I see this big white shape coming down here. That's kind of interesting. And then um, these shapes coming in here, this, this perspective. So, whoops, my critique on this one was um, that um, two things. One, the lines in the sidewalk from the first one. Oh, gosh darn it! I thought I'd I thought I'd be smarter because I was going forward instead of going backwards in the order of the paintings, and I'm still not that smart. Um, so these lines help bring this out. But look at this beautiful color here. This beautiful yeah. warmth yeah. here. You should stay in Kathleen's place, but she and so you've, to um, show off your so you oh. so you've lost it. Um, you know, you could still bring back a, a nice stretch. color here. Yeah, I, I muddied it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it it did get a little muddy, and so but but we live we live and learn that way. And like those sidewalk um, lines coming out of here, just really subtly, maybe even just one, would give it a little bit more perspective. Okay. Um, the other thing in this sign, which you did wonderfully, because it's not too tight, but it's, um, there's enough information there. This is at one angle, and this is at a little bit higher angle, and it needs to follow this a little bit. Uh, up just a tiny little bit, but it's so close. I'm, I'm being a little bit picky here, just so that you, you um, tighten that up, and you can dramatize that a little bit too by making it a, just a little bit bigger here like it would be in perspective so that line would come okay. down and get a little bit smaller because it is such a big part i love that you didn't add the phone number here which was a big thing these characters right here are really wonderful and um there's a lot of light going on here you could have brought a little bit more light like in the picture i cannot it will be the death of me um a little bit more light right around you know this right here to, to really make that pop. Yeah, I think I need, should I add more light in the ceiling as well? Like, you know, there's that, oh, I'm pointing and you can't see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> yeah. Under the, under the end where the end should be larger, like you said, to get more angle. Should that be more white around the end? Cause that seems to pop more. And I, I was just afraid it would take away from the figures. Yeah, no, I would just, I, this is just fine. The way you've got it here is just fine. I would just bring it down a little bit here a little okay. bit more. I love the way that you left this kind of, and just gave us a little bit of information to tell us that there was um, something happening there. This is a really, really nice little painting. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And this is a fun painting. Um, Steve? Hi, Deke. Hi. Um, so you, I'm, I get to be a little bit more brutal with. Yeah, go, go for it. <laughs> So here, I'm going to use this one as the example of what we were trying to do with this. Is this, this isn't watercolor, is it? This is oil. Yeah, I, I, I thought as much, but there are some things that look a little watercolory. Yeah. Now, my first question is, is this, is this top white part a part of the painting? No, this is, I squared it. See that mark in the sky? That, that's an actual hole in the, in the, in the paper. Oh, okay. So th that's so good. I'm glad. It's going to be a square. Um, 
but so in the future when you do these make sure that you crop that painting because it's hard it's hard to yeah. um but but so here we've got this beautiful c shape going on and um and so even though you want to push these back it, it, that's what's so confusing and you guys it it is confusing um because you want to push those back and get them bluer and lighter yeah. but you still want to keep i want you to hang something on here i want you to have this to to hang this painting on where's your where's your center of interest it's the um it's the warm uh, embankment the right, right on there yeah okay. um and so um and these trees are fabulous. I love the technique that you used for those. Okay. In the yeah. tops of the trees, I wouldn't get as dark because they kind of fade off and go yeah. off into, into nothing. So again, and, and this, could, this could so make this shape a little bit interesting by going up and around and kind of uh, linking those darks together. And even splitting these trees, these were two trees. Yes. And, um, because then you'd have three things versus two things that you're going in between. So to make those two. So I would, I would just kind of come in here and, and find that, that thing to hang that painting on. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Um, this cow is done beautifully. Um, and I'm trying to, to um, I, and I think, you know, by developing this area just a little bit more with the dark darks, you know, bringing a dark in here and making this light, you could really pop it right there. And that's a great place for the, um, for the focal point to be. Good. So, Thank you. yeah. And again, you know, always using those little things to get you to there. This is a great, look at how you're pointing right there. And this is kind of coming right here. So I think it, it's just this big darker shape without losing the beautiful way that you painted these. And this, it was so funny because when I saw this, I thought, oh, those branches are so wonderful and you're going to have to let them go. Yeah. You're going to have to get rid, you know, they can be down here or something like that. But up here, it's, it's too much of a dark, dark against a light, light. Yeah. You want to keep, and look at how you could even bring this shape, whole shape into that, whatever that C shape is. Good. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to... Um, uh, skip this one, but and again, we know where the focal point is, and it's in a nice place. So, um, so we're going to keep moving. Yeah, you have about n probably um, forty. Oops, I just figured out um, about forty minutes, and um, I see at least nine paintings left to choose from. Oh, so we got lots of time. Okay. Um, we have lots of, so there's a couple that I'll start over and go through once again, because I didn't spend time on it. And it was, uh, I was wondering if I was going to be really quick because I kind of looked at these and studied them. And, um, so there's a couple that we'll go back and kind of emphasize. So, um, on, um, that's because I saw how Mary task masked all those other critiquers. And I thought, she's not going to keep me on schedule. I'm going to get out ahead of her. So um, the, um, the, the, the thing about this one is that the photo indeed has no, um, there isn't great light on this. There aren't light and shadows. So um, when you, when you painted it, oops, you, you have some, there's some, there's light in here. It, it doesn't look like an overcast day. And so, but there's not enough light, consistent light to tell you where the light is coming from. Does that make sense? Is Robin here? Maybe not. Yeah, she's here. She just probably didn't unmute yet. Oh, okay. Robin, I unmuted oh. you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's. I know after I painted it 
that did seem like not any particular light. I went back to the spot on a sunny day and I want to redo it with the sun. <laughs> you know something? And even um, at this point, just um, go in there and, and force that light. You don't even, um, because you've got the light along the side of this, this woman here. Now mm -hmm. the side of this tree could be lit. And um, these, these they'd have dark on this side versus that. I like the way this is kind of coming up and around here. Um, these could have a little bit of darker. So you can force that. Just think about it, where the light would hit. If it was hitting, you can just, you know, touch the, a couple of these just to get that, that. And I think that'll kind of, once you have a sense of where that light is, it'll add to that because this is a lovely, lovely little painting. I love the way you let this really loose. One of the things that the issues I had was this right here, which is a rock in the, in the painting. I mean, in the photo, but this could actually be, I would just bring this more down as a, as a, shape as a bring this green down into here to cover this to bring this whole path you know to let this lead you around up and around here and then into your into your focal point okay so so yeah. lose that even though it was in the photo this back here these this can just be painted doesn't need the detail that you have in here okay okay um, this is in shadow this you know if if the light is coming here we can have a little bit of a you know, light hitting some there. So you will find that light, even on these branches and stuff, you can, um, you can hit them. To, to, and I think that's gonna just make such a, uh, such so much more of a difference in just, the, because it's a nice painting as is, but you could really bring it up a level by just adding a direction of light. Um, the, the branches you did nicely, you know, this is, the, it varies in color, it varies in width and, um, and they're wispy that way. Um, but, but the leaves are a little bit, they could be just grouped a little bit more. They don't need to be as spotty. So you could find bigger shapes in those leaves. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah it does. Thank you. You bet. Um, and this right here, it looks like a bench or something. And I think I would kind of, of lose that. It's, it's, this could just be the grass and stuff like that. It's one, you've got so much going on down here that some of those other things don't need. You did a great job on the brushwork here. Nice job. Thank you. Um, this one is, um, who is this? This is Julie. Um, I know where your focal point is. Um, and is Julie on? Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. Um, so your focal point is right here. And um, so we just need to develop that focal point um, a little bit by, you did a great job on these trees, the, br the brushwork and the, the, is this a, oh, this is pastel. But so the, it's still brushwork, isn't it? Is it pastel work? What do you call it? <laughs> um, and you've got a source of light here. And it's not like a harsh light. You didn't jump a lot in the values, which is really nice. Um, and you've got these beautiful shadows coming down. The red doesn't necessarily read all that well right here. I would keep this just a shadow and keep, um, you've got it in the value, but I'd still just keep them. Um, I don't think you need that, that color there. But look at this, this is just wonderful. And this, this front water is just beautiful. But now we go to our focal point and this is a little bit, sharp edged if you want it to be distant again if yeah, you want i have to say that wasn't really what i was going for for a focal point <laughs> and that was just sort of supposed to be like in the background i guess yeah but because you've got a sharp edge you've uh -huh. got the absolute darkest dark against your lightest light okay you've got your highest chroma you did everything to tell us that this is your focal point <laughs> so um so, but so make it your focal point. These are beautiful lead-ins, you know, or you could take it out all together and it would still be a beautiful painting even without it. But you can push this back by making it um, lighter and bluer. And then wherever the light is coming from this direction, you can hit that side so that it's got a little bit of, of there. This needs to be less 
sharp. And even that far back, it wouldn't be that dark. So that would really need to lighten up. And the other thing would be just to bring this bush just a little bit over the front of it in order to, to send it back. Because when you overlap stuff, it, yeah. it, it gives it more dimension. Okay. Yet here again, if you have those really subtle, and I don't want to see lines or, or waves or anything like that in the water. Look at what you have the water. These subtle things right here can just be subtle in, you know, this one would be big and long because it's closer and then they get smaller and thinner as they go away and leading you right into that, that focal point. Um, and even with the clouds, you could subtly just kind of get it done. And so that people don't even know what they're doing. You, you wouldn't believe how much control you have in a painting to drive people to what you want to say or want them to look at. Um, and so um, the same here, you don't need that because you'll have so much direction going there and you've got so many things that make it your focal point. So you don't even need that. But when you do need it, like with that one boat that was in, in the trees way in the beginning, if she wasn't going to hit that boat with a little bit of color or something to say that it was her focal point, then she needed those directionals in the water. And this one, uh, you could do it very subtly, but it's so obviously your focal point that you don't need that as much. Okay. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. So um, this one has a reference photo. And look at those leaning buildings. Look at those lines not, not going straight up and down. This photo is crooked. This photo was taken a little bit at an angle. Because, and the way, one way to straighten your photos is to make sure these lines go straight up and down. So if you were to take it, I would take it in Photoshop and tip it a little bit so that it was straightened. But when I painted it, I would make, oops. I would make sure that these lines were straight up and down. You see how they're crooked? Who's, who's is this? This is Patricia? Is she on? She's on. So we're doing a chore today. Pardon? I'm here. Oh, okay. So did you see the, the photo and how it was crooked and how you painted from the photo? Yeah. I yeah. kind of like the angles though. That's why I did it. <laughs> um, well, but, but the thing is that the whole building, you can still get the angles in there, but these would make it look like it was a tilting, falling down building. Because these would these should be straight across because this is one point perspective, right? So because you've made it one point perspective, um, then these should be perfectly straight across and they've got an upward mm -hmm. upward tilt. So, but you can on the other hand you can totally stylize it if you want to. I mean, if you want tilted buildings or whatever, that's not a bad thing if that is what you liked about that, um, and. Um, but even on a hill, these would all still be straight up and down, even if this building was on a hill. Does anybody have questions about that? I get the hill. But this wasn't on a hill, I don't believe. Let's look again. Um, so it's just that the, this, this photo is just a little tilted. Well, I took it from the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so, and all you do when you get home, I, all my, most, I have to straighten out most of my photos. I don't know what's, and especially when I take pictures of my paintings, they're always crooked. But um, I usually have to, I always make sure that I have like a, and even when I paint, I have a T-square on my easel so that I always make sure that my lines are straight up and down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Richard, because look at, look at the, look at the, the angle of this one. Yeah. You know, they get more and more dramatic. But on the other, so now let's go we made that point, but let's go back. And um, uh, you did a great job on the windows. You did a great job down here. Um, you have variation. Where's your focal point? I was hoping the sharp, I was hoping it would be through here, but well, I, I see what I you mean because I I, it really doesn't pull you over there. It's really here. I can't see where you're pointing. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I know that's uh, my problem. On the, on the left building where yeah. the gutter is on the top right and then the windows, 
Yeah. But I tried to bring the eye over by sharpening the building on the right with the dark and the light. Um, I guess it's just too spread out. It's, there's no focal point. <laughs> there is no focal point. But we can make a focal point. And I'll tell you how, if you want your focal yeah. point right here, and that would be a wonderful place to have a focal point, I would put some of this blue from the window in there. I would put, and maybe leave some of that blue there, you know, kind of have just a little touch going there and a touch going here. And then what you did over in this window could be up in here. And that'll be your focal point. You've got a dark, you've got a dark and a light. You'd have high chroma. You've got sharp enough edges. They don't need, you don't want them sharper than that because this is up in the air. And because it's further away, they would get a little more blurred as opposed to down here where it would be more, you know, where your eye is or, or at eye level. Okay. So you can definitely bring them here, but you need to, um, and I would do that because this, this is, you did a great job on this window, but I'd rather see it over here. You did a great job on these windows and letting, and this front here, just kind of letting it be and giving us just enough information to tell us what's there. So um, good job on the painting. The only, the, um, the big thing is to, if, if this is where you want their eye to be, um, it can, but I'm not sure that that's, that's what you're looking for. And then you could really tip off this little, this little thing too. You could add a different chroma to it to, you know, maybe warm it up or something. Okay. Okay. Right. Good idea. Thank cool. you. Cool. I would paint that in a heartbeat. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so this was a reference photo. And Kim, are you here? Yes. Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, this is a, a terrific painting. And again, um, look at what she did, how stylized it is um, from this photo. But look at what she, this big C shape that she took here is just wonderful. But then she kind of, you know, made it her own and just used some of the elements to, to, to do this. My, um, so you did a great job with this big shape and, um, and hanging a lot of the painting on that shape. Now, the um, one, the, the drawing has foreshortened it because this is, this from here to here is so, is, is so long. Whereas if you look in the painting or in the photo, see, this isn't very big. And it lays it down and sends it back where you, by making it that tall, brought it, foreshortened it. So this doesn't go back. You see what I'm saying, Kim? Are you there? Yes, yes. You see where I'm, do you see how this? So that needs to go back, it's. Yeah, and you can do it by narrowing this, but also bringing it, bringing it down a little bit because this from here to here is a long ways. If you brought it down, it would kind of foreshorten it. And that, and you have to foreshorten even on a stream like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and, um, go ahead. So I was going to ask, would that be like, a, could I fix that with the value also by, because when I look at it now, thinking about your questions, should I, is it too even in the value if I darken going further back there? So I have the branch and the shadow in the foreground, you know, the lower right, yeah, where you're pointing. Yep. So should I have like maybe not had that where you're talking about going back, is that too light or bright? But also is that foreshortening problem? Does that make sense? Um, I'm not quite getting what you're asking, um, but you're saying this is dark up front here. And right. then, um, you know something? So I wouldn't worry about it as much down here. You can, you've got a long way in the darks to go. You've got a dark down here. So you could bring it in a little bit more. You could make this distance a little bit shorter to lay it down. The other thing you can do is make it narrower here so that it goes back a little bit further. So see, watch my arrow from there. You could cut in here mm -hmm. and then make it wide out here so that it's wider. Um, so you can just play with that. You'll, you'll, okay. you'll figure, you'll figure that out. It should, it should just be narrower here or brought down a little bit in order to lay it flat and send this back. If you want to, it does, it reads right now as it's just up close. 
And if, so I didn't know how much you wanted to stick with the painting, with, okay. the, with the thing. Um, the other thing here is that these right here are bringing, they, they're not on the tree because the tree is dead. And mm -hmm. because this yellow is back here, it, it's bringing it way forward. And you want these to sit back. These definitely need to sit back. Um, but you did a great job on the, and so her C is not a dark, dark, like in my original photos, her C is a mid value. And then she accented it with darks. So, um, but she really kept to that, that big, um, that big C. Um, so this needs to kind of not bring that so forward. I think you'll get, have a lot of success if you um, get rid of this right here. But the paint application is wonderful. The scratches are wonderful. This right here is just gorgeous. I mean, you, you could take this little piece down here and that could be, a, you know, that alone would be a really cool painting. Nice job, really nice job. Thank you. Okay. This one, here's a reference photo. And this is just a wonderful, fun um, painting. When I looked at what to critique about this, um, they're really, isn't anything here again look at the angle look at what a camera does because yeah. this, this is technically straight up and down but right. that's not what that's not what you do that's you want that you want it to look like you do absolutely yeah so i mean so there's nothing you know for everybody else you need to straighten that line for sandra you, uh -huh. you need to keep doing exactly what you're doing i love the fact that the door is wider at the bottom because everything is in that that uh, distancing thing. So the only, uh, you know, I, there's nothing uh, to critique here because it's so, um, it's so stylized. If I had anything to say when I looked at this earlier was just that this is kind of a, a dead spot. And I think it would have been even a little yeah. bit more fun if you would have just done similar stuff here. Okay. Maybe not, not put the whole windows in again, cut them off like you did this one. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Just because this is, this is, you know, uh, it, it loses the, the, the frivolity of the whole thing. Nice, nice. I love this. Thank you. I wanted to show how they're squeezing out these yes. old buildings. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So this one is, uh, Elena, this one, um, where's your focal point? Uh oh, I can't hear her. Elena, can you speak up or closer to your uh, laptop? Okay. Yes, I'm here. My uh, focal point, I think. I still can't hear her. Yeah, Elena, we can't hear you. I try to speak louder. Uh, my focal point is uh, violet here. Uh, that's the uh, violet effect. <laughs> Yeah, you, Elena, this is, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to hear you. Yeah. I try to speak louder, I think. Yeah, I'm here. You know what? So I, we can't hear you. And so I'm just going to talk about a focal point. Okay. okay. So I try uh, to speak about focal point. This is Lila. This is Lila. Yelena, Yelena, we can't, I can't hear a word you're saying. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to talk to you, okay? Instead of you letting me know. So again, <clears throat> ideally where you want your focal point is, you know, again, in one of those kind of crossover sections when you do the, the rule of thirds. And there's a lot of nice activity going up here. So I would tend to like bring it right here because you've kind of circled it and pocketed it right here. You may want to use your uh, drawing ability here. Okay. So. <clears throat> so. Go I'm not to annotate. Blue because the red. So, you know, I would be tempted to put, let me. Um, Mary, I practiced that drawing for like a half an hour and I didn't use it. Um, so yeah. I would be tempted to put the focal point right here. Um, and in order to do that, we need some dark darks and, um, and some sharp edges. 
and a dark dark and a light light and a sharp edge and you'd need some higher chroma now you've got so much chroma going on around here that you're almost going to have to like change the the chroma you could use like this dark purple up there and bring a couple of these these flowers up here so that we kind of come into the painting right here you've got it nicely circled with these darker branches but the only thing with this painting is that there's no place to 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 settle to bring your attention it's all over and and so to just develop that focal point i do see there's a house in the back here yeah and you could um <coughs> if you wanted to you could um bring that house out a little bit yeah. and make that a darker shape um but so the only thing with this particular painting the branches are done nice um but i would i would work on a focal point that'll kind of bring the whole thing together i'm sorry we can't hear you so okay, I, i'm going I, to I, keep moving I, here thank you very much um Mary, what do I need? Oh, there I am. Way over here. Uh, I understand about focal point. I wish I could hear her. I know she's talking to us. Elena, I we thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mary, you'll talk to her afterwards. I will. You? Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's the reference photo, and here's the painting. Nice stylized painting, Tom. Is Tom on? He was. Are you? But, yeah, time's on. Okay. So, um, so here's the reference photo, and here's the painting. Um, and like I said, this is very stylized. So there wouldn't there you wouldn't have to do a lot in order to keep the stylization of this. However, um, to bring it back more representational. Um, these, this, these highlights are way, way, way too light relative to the darkness of the trees. The, this, okay. they, the, the light on this, so take this color, your dark color, and then yeah. just lighten it, you know, with white, and that's going to give you a really god-awful, very cool brown. So you need to add, you know, yellow or yellow ochre to it to make, to lighten that brown, but make it warmer because it's being hit by the sun. But it needs to be this jump between here is so huge in value and it needs yeah. to be so much closer um and this is this highlight is lighter than the ground plane and you guys are all you know that your lightest light is your sky right and your second lightest light is your ground plane and your third lightest light is anything that's at an angle so anything like this so the, first, the sky is the first, your ground plane right here is gonna be your lightest, so the, so the ground. Your anything at an angle, and then your darkest darks are gonna be your verticals. So this would be your darkest dark. Um, but, so th but this ground plane is darker than this. Mm -hmm. um, it should be darker than your sky. So these could, you could leave this and just make these, uh, make sure when you do this, either make them a value that's darker than this, because it's a vertical, or make this lighter if these aren't aren't, aren't. you're gonna have to force that um yeah nice, nice stylized trees back here nice job on the branches and stuff but nice back here my my um these greens back here are really warm it's almost the same green that you use throughout the painting but that's what adds the stylization to it so um so you can keep that or you could gray these a little bit by mm -hmm. adding a little blue or gray that'll kind of send them back um, and here again, uh, it's almost the same green everywhere, which is kind of nice because it keeps the color harmony really simple. Um, but you could also make these, um, this could, when this gets lighter, then these will be a different color. Th these would be the right color. So I'd leave these, probably lighten this, and then get yep. this value so that it's, it's closer to that value. Yeah. The only other thing right. is if you look at the bottom of these trees, it's almost a straight line here. You could add a little bit of interest by dipping some of these leaves just a little, you know, making that line a little bit more variegated, you know, edgy. Yeah. But nice job, nice background here. Good paint application. Thank you, thank you. Sure. 
Um, and this one, now Mary, keep me on a timer. Okay, you got three more. Okay, oh good. Um, so this one, the, again, when I squint at this, th this just needs some value adjustment. Nice drawing, you've got some good perspective in here. Um, make sure that it's going to the same, um, the same uh, vanishing point. And it looks like it is, it doesn't read poorly at all. Um, but I, it's the color of the boxes that I would look at as far as values. Because when you squint, um, you know, this yellow is really, they read as yellow boxes instead of cardboard boxes. Um, and so the only thing I would do on this one is to come in and really play with, um, play with the, like a, more of a yellow ochre color or add some of that purple to that, to that, <clears throat> your yellow ochre to get the color of that cardboard. Okay. But it, it's nice that you kept this really simple around him and that he's kind of highlighted. Um, and one of the things with focal points is that when you have a person in, you know, not a person way in the distance, like those little dabs of paint that read as people, but when you have a person, <clears throat> the focal point is automatically the, fa the face. If his mm. face was up here, that would still be your focal point. It's, it's human nature for faces to go, for us to look at faces. So, um, <clears throat> and this one is right in the middle of the painting and that's okay too. It's, you know, usually you'd have it off to the side a little bit, but you've kind of, you're telling a story of the depth of him in this truck. Um, and uh, so the, and nice, you know, nice lines coming down here. They could probably be a little bit lighter, a little, you know, so they're not so, they could be a little bit more subtle, but you're driving everything to your focal point. Mm -hmm. So good job on this one. A lot of drawing, huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I asked him if I could take his picture. I'm sorry I didn't do a photo because I oh, misunderstood. <clears throat> but um, I asked him if it was okay if I took his photo. Yeah. Yeah, uh, as, you, as, as we all should. Huh? Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. You bet. So is Alvino, is that how you yeah. say it? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think on this one, the, uh, your road is the exact same color as the buildings in the distance. And so for me, I would choose one and lighten it. Okay, you did a great job, uh, you know, on th the painting and the drawing and all that kind of stuff. And I would be tempted to lighten those buildings to push them back. Because the photo of this, the, the road really was dark and most people really lightened it up. And so I do like the fact that you kept it that way, but these could be the fact that it's the same color, you know, mm -hmm. the same value. So when you squint at this, um, I would, I would shoot those, those buildings back with a lighter color. Okay. Um, and this, the, I also think that there could probably be a little bit more, a little bit lighter in the, in the, um, in the grass, in the ground plane because it's almost the same value as the trees and your ground trip plane is going to be a little bit lighter than that. And I think that would add a little bit more interest, but nice paint application, nice drawing on the variation of these and the vagueness of them. These, the figures are really wonderful. Um, so all as well, I'd also put a little bit of that sky color into onto the water because the water is a little bark, bit dark too, unless you want to keep it this low key painting. And then I, then, um, cause you've got a real strong center of interest right here. Yeah. Um, but you could still add just a little bit of, um, of either chroma okay. or value onto the grass and onto the water. Okay. Okay. Nice. Thanks. This one I loved. Who did this one? James? Yep. Good job. Um, my, and you did a great job on the drawing of the car and stuff. The red doesn't read really well down here as far as the color, it was a muddy color, um, but it, it, it's neither here nor there. It just doesn't, it, it uh, has you questioning a little bit what that is. Um, my biggest issue on this one was that if we look at the photo, look at the, the coolness of this building versus the photo. And I think what's gonna make that car pop, if you squint at this, it's just a little bit warmer. Can you see the difference between the, the, you've got it, you've shaded it a little bit more, but it's, it's just a little bit warmer and, this, and that'll make this snow so much cooler. So for me, um, 
when I've looked at this. If I think if that because this all kind of blends into one, and that's a very again very stylized, and that might be exactly what you wanted to do. But if it if it were me, I'd probably just warm this up a touch, which is opposite of everything we're saying. It's you want it to go back, so you need it to cool, but it's not that far back. And I think it would really set this off. Does that make sense? Was James here? He was. Okay. So, you know, I love these big shapes and that he left these big shapes here. Um, I think the tree could be more of a big shape versus it being broken down like this, but it doesn't read poorly. I look at these branches back here. That's just fabulous because they're so subtle. And they, but it, it gives movement and um, so I like this. And the car he did just perfectly. That's your last one. Wait, so, where's Sue's? No, this, the, oh. no, we got a couple more. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Nancy, are you here? She was. Okay. I am. <clears throat> Hi, Nancy. Hi. Um, we do more. Sorry. This is, this is. Um, this is just phenomenal. And you guys squint at this and look at this big, beautiful shape she's got right here that she hung this painting on. Oh, this big reverse C going on here, which is just wonderful. So it was, it took me a long time to find something wrong with this painting. Um, <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> but if it were mine, if it were me, the, the two things I do is that again, you've led us so strongly to this part right here. And I would give us something there. Just the, the tiniest little chroma. Doesn't have to be anything in particular. But I, I, when I lead people someplace so strongly, I love to have something there for their, them to go to. Um, and, but that's, that's a stylistic thing. And the other thing that I, that I thought about when I looked at this is that if this were mine, I would crop it. I would cut off the top portion, probably right around here. You've given us all these informations for these reflections down here, but it's got it. This seems this is right in the middle of the painting, mm. so you've got us coming down so hard. And when I cropped it, hold your you guys hold your hands up across the top of it, and just have you know crop off a couple inches on the top. Then then this isn't the same equal as this, and it it just made it so much more interesting for me because I can fill in that blank. I know that there's those grates that keep on going there. Mm -hmm. so does that make sense? Yeah. So. I'm sorry, Deke, I, I uh, uh, miscounted here. We have a few more. How much time do we have? Uh, it's 1.23, but seven minutes. Okay, so I'm going to um, skip this one because we, we know where the focal point is. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Um, the only thing I want to say is that this is really two paintings, you know, that they, they're not really tied together. So something would need to happen to kind of tie them together, but they're two really interesting paintings. So this one I'm going to skip real quick. This one I'm going to skip. We've talked about this one and is this the same person that's done this one and just modified it? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a portrait view instead of landscape. And I put some more light in the front, trying to lead the eye back. Yeah. And so, and, and the thing is that when you get different people critiquing it, you'll get different, them saying different things. And I think what you did, because I heard the critique of this, so I think what you did was just great. So then to critique it even more, now you're going back and forth and back and forth. And mm -hmm. I think what you did was just fabulous. Great, great. Not, just enough information, not too much, really nice. Because it, it was already wonderful back there. Oh, thanks. I love the softness of your um, threshold. Um, this one's really interesting. I love this painting. Um, this, um, so we've got our focal point right here. And the only thing is that if you look at the reference photo, did I show you that already? Um, so squint at this truck right here, because we just, this is our focal point. So this is kind of what we need to work on. And look at the value of this under here. And then the shadow, which is what is going to make this so interesting. And then look at the, you've really, this is kind of popping out of here and it shouldn't, this was darker than this. Okay. And then these shadows could be just a little bit, um, 
actually the shadows are just fine. Um, the, you've gone off from the drawing. Um, this white spot right here reads kind of as one of those little billboards that are above the, um, the highway there. And if you look, that's actually a part of these buildings. So, but, um, so if, if I was critiquing it to how well you imitated the drawing, we would have to talk about some drawing issues, but it works just the way it is. Making them so vague is, is just wonderful. So, and you pushed them back. This could probably be just a little bit lighter. You don't want this necessarily to compete as much, yeah. but, um, and, and there's a lot of movement in here. And the brushwork here is just fabulous. Um, so, um, I like this painting a lot. You've got, you know, your dark, dark, your light, light. I'd even, you could even pop that a little bit just to get more chroma so that you're not, um, you're bringing it down here and tying it in with that. But really nicely done. Is Thank Todd you. Good? Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and this one, I'm just going to mention really quickly. This is just a really wonderful painting. Um, you've got your center of interest smack dab in the middle, which is just okay because it's, it's a real strong thing. I would have been tempted. It's so centered right in the middle. I would have been tempted to maybe, you know, pull this off a little bit or maybe even made this river a little bit wider here. So it wasn't this kind of um, perfect thing, but the colors and the values and stuff and this light in the background here um, is, is wonderful. Good job. Um, this is, uh, I'll show you the reference photo. So where's your center of interest on this one? I thought it was the um, foreground, the, the first coconut. I had my darkest dark against the lightest light. Right in here or up the one? The bottom, right here? the bottom of that coconut. Right down here. Yep. Okay, that's, that's not a great place for a, uh, um, and it really, I, I, for me, that's not the focal point at all. Um, that's not where my eye is lead, led. That's not where I come in or where I stay. Um, it's more right around here. Um, and I, so I would push it right here. I would get, you know, like a shadow of some of this on here and get maybe a higher highlight if that's mm -hmm. where you want the, the, uh, the thing to be. Um, and then your, um, You've, you know, you've got some things here, some light lights and dark darks and high chroma back here, which brings me back here. Right. So I think if this is where you want your, your focal point to be, that you really need to focus that right there. And, um, and um, this is, when you look at the, it's a, but it, it's, so now you're just improving your stylized painting because you, you've changed the colors of the um, cactus and good drawing, good, um, you know, I even like the, the, the door or the railing in the background and stuff. Um, did I go the right? No. Um, but um, There's not, I, I, there's not a strong focal point in the photograph either. So you've got some of the dark coconut here and stuff. And, and I would actually, if it were my painting, I'd probably bring the focal point right around here so I can use that chroma to get you there. Whoops. You've got, we're right at 130. Can we go a little bit over? So, um, yes, we can go a little over if people need to leave. They. They will. Yeah. How many? How many more are there? I I think there are. I mean, my counting is not good now. Um, I think we have six. Okay, but some of those were some of those I weren't gonna I wasn't gonna include. So okay. I'd say ten more minutes at the max, probably five. Okay. Okay. So there isn't a so you really need to force that, and I would be forcing it right around here so I could use this chroma to get you here, um, and. Um, and that's interesting because that seems more center to me. It is, it okay. is, but I'm trying to look for something that, you know, could, it should be right around here, but you don't, 
have anything right there. Every, you know, it's kind of in the middle here. Uh -huh. But you know what? I wouldn't, I would, the only thing I would do to this painting, because it's, you, the drawing is great, the rendering is great, you know, the, the perspective and the depth is great. And the only thing that I would really do is really pop a focal point. Okay. Um, and so choose where you want it to be. And I would tend to be putting it right here so I could use that to get there. Because you've got these pointing this way. Um, you've got these shadows coming up this way. So I would just uh, force it there. Well, Deke, I've not met you. This is a great lesson today on focal point. And the, my takeaway quote that you gave today is, quote, give me something when you get me there. I you know, love it. And, and truly, um, I talk about that all the time because so many people lead you to someplace and there's nothing, nothing there. Um, so thanks. I'm glad Thank you. That that's helpful. Um, I love this picture and uh, great painting. Sue, this is just awesome. Your brushwork is just wonderful. It's, you've got the leaning inspired by your artwork. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, you've got the leaning building here. <laughs> okay. See that? So you've, you've got a kind of leaning, which is, you know what? I had a teacher, um, Lee Hu, that um, he would come up and his comment on her painting was always, not comfortable, not comfortable. And that was his criteria was how comfortable it was. And so when you have those leaning buildings, even though the painting is great and the application is great, you, you all of a sudden, it's not comfortable because the building's leaning. And they won't even know that. If you ask them what makes them uncomfortable, they won't even know. But there's something that that gives a little. So unless you're for, wanting that discomfort, um, straight buildings are are important, that, and that's an easy fix. These colors are just great. These grays are fantastic. Um, and my, where's your focal point, Sue? It's the door. Okay. Um, and and you've led us. You know, you're leading us right in there. Um, and you've got a piece of chroma in here to get us there. The, I had, when I looked at the, yeah, look at this. Um, the only things that I was looking at, I love the fact that you turned that path a little bit because the path in the picture actually goes that way, but you, you brought it back into here. You've got a great shadow going up the hill, so you see it coming down. Um, so the only, the, uh, there were some poles that were up against the building that I thought could have been dramatized because it would have something in front of the building that would give it more depth or whatever. So uh, now I'm being really picky, Sue, because I can, because I know you. Okay. Um, so I would put something a little bit in front of that building. Okay. And, um, and I'd probably lighten the shadow just a little bit so it doesn't compete because you've got one, two, three things here. And I would just kind of make them be, you know, make it be right there okay. um but the paint application and you were not trying to make it look like stone right you were trying to stylize it with the painting yeah i wasn't working too hard to make it yeah stone. i don't i gave up on those stones too <laughs> um <laughs> you know i did struggle with the dark, with the warm and cool because you know it seemed like the left hand sunny side should have been a little cooler but it just read warm to me so yeah um and and no, I don't, I think you're fine there. Um, and this is, I mean, this, the drawing here is just really wonderful. The, the other uh, thing that I would do is, um, is sharpen this up a little bit. If you look, these are light, the grasses here are light on either side of the door, and then there seems to be a path. And I think that you could, you could force kind of a subtle, darker smudge right there to get you into that door as opposed to this hole being, being smudgier and so that it um, right. kind of blocks you from going in. Give me passage here, get me through here, okay? Sounds good, thanks a lot. You bet. About five more. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, this one, I'm just gonna talk about really quickly. Um, this one is just wonderful. Look at this strong lead to that focal point and um, you know, everything, everything else around here is just, just a really, really wonderful painting. Um, my one critique is that you've led me here. So give me something. You already gave me all these flowers. So, um, and so these could be, because they're all superstar flowers, some of them, they could be knocked down just a little bit, or this one could be heightened, and that would be an easier way to do that. Um, 
so that you, you have one that's really standing out from the rest. So that these are just all supporting actors and now you've got your star and you, you're real close. I mean, I even think that you could just put more of like a red or a chroma into the, you know, the, the center of it or something. Just, I want a little bit more when I get there. So that's just, and that's, that's personal taste. So this, the other thing is that this line right here doesn't read really great. I don't think you need it there. So is Jean here? Maybe not. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, so. thank you. Okay. Um, this one, how wonderful. Look at this painting. Who does that? Who, who paints all that stuff? Um, really nice job. Good job. It's just phenomenal. Um, I'm going to go back to the focal point on this one. Where's your focal point? This blue jar on top because I want to get the view go all the way to that one. That one right there? Yes, yes. Okay. And that, um, what's going to happen here is that you've got people and faces. Yes, and people are gonna I know. Go to the, this is your focal point. Okay. This is your focal point. And to that end, this doesn't, nothing needs to happen here. You just did such a wonderful job. The two things that, um, that I would do, and if you look at the photo reference, look at the umbrellas on the painting. Yeah, I think I make it a little bit too pop. <laughs> well, no, and then look at the umbrellas in the thing. Now, you can use those umbrellas to give you more distance. So this one can be bigger. This one needs to be, you know, this one can be a little bit smaller and this one can be a little bit smaller so that you use those umbrellas to, but your umbrellas are a little um, short and stout. You can dramatize those a little bit more. So the thing I would work on in this painting is this one's fine or it could be a little bit bigger and then these can be a little bit smaller. And what I would do to make this your focal point and to really pop it, you've got black here and you've got a nice highlight. I would up the chroma on this dress. I would use this blue and that lightness on her dress, on the, on the sunny side of her dress, and probably push that back a little bit further. But really pop this focal point. Because then they'll come in here where you want them to. You don't want get, to have them come here because they're going to get lost and it's going to take them a while. You want them right here, and then you've circled them back around, and then they'll come, and then you send them right back to your focal point. Really nice job. Really beautiful thank you. painting. You just did such a good job on this stuff. Thank you. Yeah. And this one is, again, nice job. Um, my biggest issue is with this car right here, which um, reads more as a toy car. So um, this one just needs more work to make it, either get rid of it, because you really don't need it, and the other thing, you've got a person in here again, and I would make this your focal point, and then it'll lead into this dramatic light on those buildings, which we see. Is this, where is this? I don't, it, it looks San Francisco-y to me because of the, the color of the light in these. Berkeley. But look, what? It's Berkeley. Yep. Um, so um, get, look at how these trees go back because of the, the coolness and the chroma, the paint application, the brushwork is, is wonderful. These cars read fine. Um, this one could be, you know, toned down just a little bit. It doesn't need to be, you don't want it to compete with this at all. You want these to kind of be grayed out and they're kind of in shadow. So I would, even though I'm sure you saw some shine on the car, I would still tone these down quite a bit. And then I would just add a little bit of chroma here. You've got this white line that you could use to highlight and I'd probably put like a, a colorful shirt on, on there to, because this, again, the eye goes here to, to, because it's a person. So nice job. Um, this one, um, again, these could be toned down. The focal point, you're leading me right here. So you've got something there. Um, it, um, and you've got a, you know, enough interest right there, but it kind of competes with these. So I'd knock these down quite a bit. And the other one on this one is that this is, the clouds are a little bit noisy, meaning act, active. And your painting is so busy, which is wonderful. This is just gorgeous. You did such a great job on this. You did a great job on the hills. Um, really, really nice. 
And so I would calm this down so that they, so that they can rest there. You, this doesn't give you any more information. It's not telling you that it's a, you haven't put an overcastness or cloud shadows in the foreground. So you don't need those clouds to tell you anything. So I would just, um, I would Thank you. Keep, them, keep them simple. Thank you. Um, this one, the, um, pardon? Um, this one, the, the rocks aren't quite reading like rocks. So you're on the edge of, you've got the shapes and you've got the, the values. Um, but um, I need a little, so I think they're a rock, yeah. but I'm not sure. And so you're on that, you're, you're trying to walk that line of giving them just enough information and making them colorful and, and you know, abstracting them a little bit. Um, but you, I think you need to come back just a little bit and give them some, um, some information that they're rocks. You've got real warm stuff going on here. So if this is in light, this would be warm. And you've got this really, really cold. So I think some warmth in here and maybe a little bit of what a, the, the rock color actually was, just a little bit here as well. So that it's not your lights aren't that cool unless it's a blue rock because that would technically almost be your your local color. So I don't I don't have the reference photo, so I don't know exactly um, uh, what and and these you know some of these shapes can just go right into that, which you you know you're doing here a little bit, which is nice. So um, for me, I need to, because this is if this was cool back here, you could probably leave these and they would read a lot better but you've got two different things going on here. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, the rocks were all in shadow. So I was just trying to use cool colors on them to express them. Yeah, and so um, the, I, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Maybe I need some harder edges on them. Yeah, a little bit along here, but there's something that's just not, um, there's something that's just not reading. I think it's a rock. But I'm not sure. It could be like a piece of paper, a piece of tin, or you know, a, a, something else. This one is reading more. These two read a lot more. This one has the shape of a rock, but there's something that's not telling me. And I'll think about that a little bit and see if I can figure it out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You bet. And I know we're coming close to the edge. Yep. I should have kept my notes, Mary. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't give you better. Um, uh, I, I'm pressing the next button and it's not going to next. So I don't know what's happening. Uh, I can't help you with that. Oh, there we go. Now it'll probably go five ahead because I pressed it like three or four times. You know, while you're waiting for it, one of the questions I have for you is when do you decide where your focal point is? At the very beginning. When you draw that out, when you put your shapes in, you do it around that focal point. And like I said, you can choose the golden mean. I use the rule of thirds. So I always put it on one of those fours. You force it there. You do everything you can. You don't, you don't go looking for it after the fact. Um, so this one, the only thing, was this the next one or was there one before this? this? Is the, I think this is the next one. Okay. So, um, this build, these buildings are just a little bit dark. They're, they're, they need to be pushed back into this, but otherwise you did a really good job on this. Um, even the people, I love how, how vague they are. I love this person right here sitting on the thing. So good job on that. Um, I, I question the trees in the front. Um, I can go either way on them, um, but the biggest, the biggest jump out on here was, um, was how dark this was because it, it that's exactly where your eye goes and um i'm not sure even if you you want your eye to go there that you'd still want it that dark so i th these buildings i think could be all kind of the same value and then you could add a little bit different different things but you've got them jumping in value quite a bit okay thank okay. you you bet yep Thanks. And I think Do you have I'm any parting words or summary statements or anything for us? 
Nope. Good job. I, I should have said that it was going to be on focal point because I think that was the thing. And so, like I said, choose your focal point up front and really play it for all it's worth. Um, you know, use those those things that make a focal point a focal point. Because at this stage in your paint, you'll get to to later on where you can break the rules. But at this stage in your painting, um, make that one of the rules that you that you choose to follow. Great. Thank you. So. Deke, thank you so much for doing this, for taking your time. Obviously, you did study these ahead of time and, and chose some. So we very much appreciate that and your and all the time and thought that you put into these. No Everyone, I, I want to just say that uh, you probably saw that I sent out an email during the week of some photos of um, some of the images of Scott Talman Power's work. And, and uh, Deke is also going to offer make available um, some paintings for us. And so this is one way um, that we can um, provide some, some kind of way of thanking her, I guess, to support her. So um, uh, Deke, anything else? Nope, I'm good. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, this is such a lesson for me. Every time you do this, you learn so much. Thank you, it was great. Thanks a lot, Deke.